go ahead and check out this week's project. All right, this week's project. If you head on over to the Adafruit Learning System, you'll see that the guide is there. This, this week we, um, we have a project. It's a prop maker feather wing based project. Um, this is a prop from the Disney Plus series Loki. And it is, it's called the Time Stick. If you actually look at the Wikipedia and the Marvel comics, it's called the Time Stick. And it is a prop that, that does things when you poke people with it. It's very fun. Um, so we have a really nice uh, assembly tutorial with some code and all the parts lists are there. So you can check that out. Um, yeah. There we go, Peter's posting all the links. Um, so all the CAD files and stuff are, are up there and uploaded, ready to download. Um, there's a circuit diagram. We'll, we'll walk through the learn guide real quick and, and kind of show you what's going on. Um, here is the prop. It's a time stick. So uh, the, the main thing about this is that it has the prop maker feather wing and the prop maker M4. Uh, it's got motion, it, with the prop maker you get an accelerometer so you can do some fun things like motion activated sound effects. Um, it's using random choice so the sound effects will be randomized every time you uh, move it. There's two different thresholds. There's a swing and a hit. So when you do a light swing it does these, uh, these sound effects. And then when you, uh, when you give it a nice hit it lights up at full brightness and it has different sound effects. The speaker is hidden inside this little area here. This is what I'm calling the collar. And the main feather is hidden inside the handle, which is a great place to put your stuff. Uh, for the light, it is actually a 3 watt RGB LED. And the prop maker feather wing has the proper um, circuitry uh, for powering these very uh, voltage hungry 3 watt LEDs. Um, everything is 3D printed. Uh, everything kind of screws and snap fits together, so it's got a really easy assembly. Uh, one of my favorite parts about that is that you can take off the, the diffuser with it just screwing it out. So all of this assembly here is just uh, snap fitted, so you have all these little uh, tubes that are printed in some translucent filament, and when you throw some light on the back there, they light up there. You could play around with different materials to, to get a better diffusion. Uh, maybe open them up or so, but yeah, all of this just snap fits together, which is really sweet. And uh, there's the 3 watt RGB LED. Um, the things about this is it gets very, very hot. So um, it's actually, uh, the PCB is actually a piece of aluminum. And that piece of aluminum kind of doubles as a heat sink. So you got to be careful uh, when doing this. So the way I was able to mount this without melting the PLA plastic is to use some uh, some standoffs and some hardware nuts to kind of elevate that from away and let the heat dissipate. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this right here is only about 10% brightness, and that is about 100% brightness. It's as bright as the sun. You actually get some optical flares going on there, which is pretty cool. But yeah, um, so the so it's mounted to that piece in there. You got um, this this pipe here is actually two pieces that are. Uh, screwed together. Everything right here is all screwed together. So you have coils. Down here is where the speaker is hidden. It's got its own uh, speaker holder that gets nestled in here, so that's still removable. Wires pass through there. They come down here, and this is actually where the uh, the slide switch, the power switch, is is, is nestled into this little built-in holder. And then, um, yeah, because everything is hollow, the speaker has plenty of area um, to. Sorry, Pedro. Is, that's plenty of area to, uh, to, for the sound to escape. Um, so down here, another one of my favorite parts is uh, the pommel, right? Every anatomy of a sword, the bottom piece here is called the pommel. And this one has some holes there to allow the, uh, the sound to come through. And then this little guy's little purple tab, if you pull this out, there's the secret sauce there. That is the heart of the project. That is the prop maker feather wing um, nestled in with the, uh, the, the M4 feather. And you can see the battery is right there. You got a connector for the speakers. You have access to the, to the uh, reset button if you want to update CircuitPython. And then of course you have access to the USB uh, port. So if you want to update the code, throw on some new sound effects, they're all uh, you know, nestled there uh, inside the, 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 the feathers um, onboard flash. So, very very cool to pull this all out. You notice that there's a little bit of a ooh, there's a little bit of a uh, groove here. This is actually sort of a rail, and inside the handle there is an accompanying 
kind of nubby part that allows this to it doesn't it doesn't uh, rotate freely in there. So that's a kind of a neat thing if you're making a, a prop with a handle and you want to have a, a, a relatively sturdy uh, arrangement for your uh, for your circuit. Um, this is a kind of cool way to do that, and that just kind of fits in there. It just fits over, and hopefully the sound effects doesn't uh, blinded everybody. But uh, there you go. There's some overhead. Um, so that's a quick demo of the prop. It's a pretty sturdy prop. Um, it, it's got the relatively good thickness, um, so you can kind of whack it as hard as you want. You'll probably want to be careful here. You don't want to hit somebody with it or anything, but you can definitely swing it around. Um, I've been doing that a lot. It's a baton, so it's about 22 inches this way. And uh, I seem to like it. It's kind of fun. Um, I really like the sound effects too. Uh, the sound effects are a part of the Motion Pulse sound pack from Video Copilot, which I'm a huge fan of Video Copilot. We have our internet break. <clears throat> Keep going. All right, so this is indeed a time stick, so it has broken the time. <laughs> it has broken the time. Um, I really like random choice as a way to randomize your, uh, your sound effects, because it's just like, you can just do that all day. You can play around with the thresholds as well if you want to make it less sensitive or more sensitive. Um, you can just update those uh, those values in the code, which is really easy to do so. Uh, there is no post-processing done on any of these pieces. They're all just straight out of the printer. So this is some Filamentum's uh, Rapunzel, Rapunzel uh, Silver. This is some Filamentum Dark Chocolate, whatever they call it. And this is some Filamentum... Uh, Galaxy Black, but you could probably find some alternatives on Amazon or wherever else you'd like to get your filament. But yeah, uh, no post-processing was done. I just used the filament colors. Um, yeah, they're pretty cool. Uh, so that is uh, one of the fun things I wanted to do is because this is, you know, modular and you can uh, easily take out the uh, the diffuser. I had an idea. Okay, I had an idea. So okay, now I have this fun thread here. So now I can adapt this and put this on other different things. So one of my favorite little kind of diffusers is this Lego head. Hello. So this Lego head is something that, of a bit of a circuit playground project we did a couple years ago. And I really thought it'd be cool to adapt the bottom here so that it would fit into this. So let's see what that looks like. It's so super ridiculous. I'm very aware of that. That's why I did it. So you got this guy here. And then you got this guy here. Bit of a skull face there. Completely transformed uh, the, the look and feel of the prop by uh, putting on a different diffuser. Um, real quick, interesting note about this little face here. This is actually just vinyl decals. So vinyl, with a vinyl cutter, you can cut out some vinyl. and use some uh, transfer tape to stick this over your 3D print. And now you don't have to worry about dual extruding. This side here, however, is dual extruded. You don't have to worry about that though. You can just use some vinyl cutters. Really good uh, technique to do some uh, some masking stuff there. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, that's that's super ridiculous and gets really bright there. So that is uh, that's a creepy Lego head. Um, yeah. Go ahead and check out the guide. We need to look at some assembly. I guess we'll keep it like this. There's a bit of an idle sound effect as well, so we really wanted to have this, this atmospheric thing going on here. So if you hear this kind of idle sound, it's a, a part of the sound pack. I don't want it to fall. There you go. Hopefully it doesn't fall. Don't blow on it. All right, so let's double check uh, the learn guide. Home page just kind of has a list of all the parts that you need. So you need the prop maker, the feather wing, uh, sorry, the feather M4, the three watt LED, the linear over speaker. It's a really nice speaker. 2200 milliamp lipo battery, which is rechargeable. A little slide switch and some headers and some cables and plugs and things that make the assembly easier. Um, down to the circuit diagram. This one just shows you how to wire up the um, the doo -doo -doo, the three watt RGB LED and the slide switch. Everything else just kind of plugs in. You got ports here for the uh, for the speaker, it plugs directly in. You also get a, a plug for the battery here on the Feather M4, so pretty straightforward. 
Um, just a note, again, the RGB LED gets super hot, so be careful when handling. In fact, don't handle it while it's turned on because it gets really hot. 3D printing page, a list of all the parts. There's quite a few of them, but uh, you know they print without any support material, which is really nice. And you can just pick whatever filament you'd like um, to choose. Um, I got a little technical drawing here for the <laughs> um, for the guard, like the screw threading for that uh, the light holder. So you can play around with that if you want to make an adapter for it. Um, but the files themselves are STLs and 3MF. You can also download the CAD source, which is in a step file format, or a um, the actual Fusion 360 file is available too, which has all of the uh, the parts and stuff like that. So if you want to get your own, um, you want to model up some things particular to the uh, the Feather M4 and the Prop Maker Featherwing. We actually have these 3D models available to download on our GitHub repo. Pedro will post a link to that, if you, if you already did actually. Um, so you can get uh, you can get these 3D models in, in various formats, STLs and steps and all the original file formats. Um, uh, they're one-to-one -one accurate. They're all pre-populated with the components and connectors. So you can have a really good one-to-one -one accurate model when designing props using the Feather and prop maker feather wing. Yeah, and there's a link to that here too as well in the learn guide. Excellent. All right, onto the code page. This page here just walks you through installing the latest version of CircuitPython onto your Feather M4. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, the Feather, all Feathers have this really nice bootloader where you can switch between Arduino and CircuitPython and whatever else by using the reset button. So that's really cool. Huge shout out to Kathy Rambor for putting this code together for us. This is actually some code from a couple years ago for a lighter prop that we did. It was a bit of a, uh, a lightsaber project. Um, so this one just kind of updates it so that it, uh, it has different colors and different thresholds and um, different sound effects. But the majority of it is, is still modifiable. You can change up the colors and the thresholds. Everything is commented, so you can just kind of read through it and uh, change up whatever values that uh, will fit your project. You can add more or take away sounds by uh, modifying the swing sounds array and the, uh, the, the hit sounds list. So you can change those out. Um, yeah, and it's pretty straightforward, so check it out. Um, we also have the sound effects available. So if you just want to download all the things to the project, use this little button here. It's called the Download Project Bundle. That'll actually download the WAV files and the library so you won't have to hunt them down, which I'm really a fan of. So check that out when you want to play around with this one. As a double check, sanity check, you want to make sure that your CircuitPy drive has all the folders and assets in your drive. That's how CircuitPython works. As you plug it into a USB capable computer, um, all the libraries and sounds and code is accessible. And here's a little screenshot of all the things. You get a nice chunky um, stack of sound effects. So, and they're kind of, they could be probably used for other projects, not just this, this thing here. Um, these actually, I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say like, and there's a link here to the Motion Pulse um, sound pack from Video Copilot if you want to check that out. Um, but we checked with our lawyers, and it's it's okay to distribute them freely. So uh, that's why we did that. Thanks, lawyers. Um, and then here's a quick little thing about uh, the the naming of the sound effects matter. So if you want to change those, you want to change those in the code. But they're pretty uh, kind of self-explanatory. You read them. The power on is called on, and idle is idle. Swings are swings. Hits are hits. So. That's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, trying to make it as simple and easy as possible for folks that are just getting started. All right, the rest of the pa the rest of the pages are all about the assembly. So making sure that your feather headers are installed in the right orientation, um, and some tips on uh, installing female headers onto your feather M4. That's always a little bit of a thing, but uh, yeah, we walk through that. Um, the wiring is all segmented as well per component. So uh, wiring everything up there to connectors, various connectors is always a good thing for assembly. Um, it just makes it easier to disconnect things, right? Um, and then the, this page here just walks you through um, setting everything up, um, how to install the hardware to get your 3 watt LED mounted to the LED holder. And then you really wanna follow this chronologically because the order of, this, uh, the order of these operations really do matter. You don't wanna do it backwards because uh, yeah, it really depends on uh, the right order. But yeah, it's just a quick look. I'm just scrolling through all the various photos of connecting and installing this in the right order. So uh, yeah, here's a nice look at the feather. You're gonna need some, some, some hardware nuts and screws.
to attach the feather, but that's probably the only thing that uses screws. Everything else snap fits. Like I said, there's really no glue that I use in any of the parts, so that's kind of cool. Um, it's all disassembly, disassemblable. <laughs> so that's really, really nice. I'm proud of that. But uh, yeah, connectors for the win. Everything's JST uh, or Molex. So there you go. Um, and then the uh, the diffuser itself has its own little kind of sub assembly. Um, again, no glue. Everything just kind of snap fits. And I made sure the tolerance is a little bit loose so that folks that have tight tolerances will, will hopefully print it out relatively easily. And there you go, that's the final build. Very awesome. You Thank got you. Some good comments over on YouTube. People are saying, just in time for Halloween, you know who they're dressing up as. I think yeah. Everybody's gonna be dressing up as Loki or Sylvie. Loki's like a bunch of variants. You could be any any creed, color, whatever gender. It all you matter. need Loki is everyone. All you anybody. need are the little hell the the horns, and you're good to go. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, people are saying that the um, stream is like playing back. It's working just fine for me, so I don't know. In which which place? They said Twitch and Facebook, or no, Twitch and YouTube. But <clears throat> here's a Facebook link if that helps. Yeah, sorry, folks. It's playing fine for me. I don't know. Right. Real quick, last night I like icosahedrons. Icosahedrons, however you say it. So I made a little icosahedron top here. It's it's kind of geometric. Makes it look like a uh, what was it Sims? Like when you have the little gem on top of your oh, head. That's funny. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. so it was really cool that you can uh, use the same sort of threading oh, yeah. to actually have like a standardized th threading that'll print very easy to be able to swap around. Right. Image or that's what I love about this objects. sort of thing. So if you wanted to increase the length of this pipe and make it a staff, you could do that as well. Um, yeah, I really like the uh, designing threads uh, for your parts that connect. And because it's all cylindrical, you don't really have to worry about like the alignment of anything. So everything can just tighten up as, 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 as you need. No glue. Um, if you are traveling, if you're a cosplayer, you need to travel. Yeah. It's so important to be able to just like, oh, let me just take this off and then like put it in a briefcase or something. So yeah, my time stick here. Very, uh, but yes, very cool. that is this week's project. Hope everybody enjoys it, um, or at least get inspired to design something um, modular. <laughs> I was gonna say completely modular, so you can edit that to your heart's content. I would have loved to sample some of the sound effects from the show, but it really wasn't. I really don't remember any of the sound effects from the show, so it's pretty much that. I know it's pretty much gonna sound something <laughs> like this. It's when they do the pruning where it actually happens. Right. It doesn't really make sounds outside of being pruned. But uh, cool. I will turn it off now. Um, yeah, any questions about the assembly or the prop or the code, any, anything like that? Feel free to hit us up throughout the show. That is this week's project. Ooh. <clears throat> Just a couple days before Halloween, so hurry up and start printing this. I think that takes about uh, probably a whole day to Oh, print. another thing about that, um, about the prop, is that it will fit on even the smallest printers. Yes. Our smallest printer is a 140 by 150 by 150 millimeters. And every one of those pieces fit because you can it's sized them all. to, yeah, I sized it to be like the max is 139 millimeters tall, and that's the handle. Everything else, like the pipe, those are two pieces. It's about 200 millimeters, or no, I'm sorry. It's like 130 millimeters tall. So um, with what I think is the smallest printer, uh, you should be able to print um, them on most printers. Now, if you got an SLA printer, I don't know. These are all done on, on FDM, Fusion, FFF, whatever they, should work they on. these days. They should work on... Uh... I, I think it'd be really cool to print the diffusers in resin. Like, that would be so cool. They would probably diffuse way better. Don't have access to one. So I don't know for sure. So uh, if you got an FDM printer, good. SLA, it's on. Figure it out. Oh yeah, apologies. People are saying Facebook is also buffering. It's playing fine for me. It's our restream then. I don't know what to say, folks. Sorry. Uh, again, I'm watching. Oh, you're watching. What restream is streaming? So uh, I don't know. It looks. I don't uh, see any glitches. <laughs> no. Right. Our restream. Right. It's actually we're frozen on restream. Huh. I mean, it's playing back full speed. Like. Right. Oh, oh, the same. Oh, that's pretty straight. So the paper.
the rest of the Don't say nothing. Only... Stop. <laughs> <laughs> let's keep going. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's what are we prototyping? What are you proto? So there's a new Spider-Man movie coming out, and Is there? they are teasing the Green Goblin, or no, they tease the Octo, Octo, Doctor Octo, uh, and then you see a Doctor. on screen, you see uh, one of the pumpkin prop bombs rolling oh. down on the road, and Lamar was like, ah. Make one. Need to jump on that. So we're using a Circuit Play ground blue fruit with some 3D printed shells that go on top of our very lovely ornament that is sized Ooh. for the Circuit Playground. So this is just a shell that attaches onto there. And these, this is a little two-piece um, ornament that will fit that. We also have one that'll fit the uh, micro bit. And what I did was uh, print out the shell, made like a little design for that, and then a little holder that will attach turn this off so you can see a little bit more better yeah it's distracting the, uh, circuit playground blue fruit and a uh, 16 neopixel ring so the battery press fits on there oh yeah you got the battery on there what press fits on uh this one is the 420 i think oh, a 500 should fit as well battery yes yes so uh all snap fit together you got these little snaps on there that uh, attach the cpb on there and the on the back side here let me do it to this one since there's right. no wires on it Damn. We'll have the uh, 16 uh, NeoPixel ring that Yay. also just snaps in like that. And you have enough room for your wires and your battery. And um, printed out one where the tolerances fit very nice on there. So it has, because uh, you have a little bit of room on there. So if you don't um, have like some way to uh, press fit it in there, it'll like sort of move around like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing right now. Just getting it to fit on there perfectly. So you can press fit it in and it won't move around like it is right now. And then beyond that, yeah, the uh, testing out different colors for the uh, shells. So these will just snap fit together. And I tried an orange one and a red one, the translucent mm. on there. Red looks the, the best. I think the red's going to go so with that. So pretty. And because this is uh, an ornament that we're actually attaching this to. Um, <laughs> what a great ornament. It's uh, like you perfect don't even need for Christmas. Christmas if you don't want to theme it out. I mean, this doesn't even remind me of uh, Spider-Man, but it looks so cool. Yeah, if you look up you know, the uh, Green Goblin pumpkin yeah, bomb it props, like that. it's that's don't what call I call it a bomb. That's what I copied. I'm the, calling it a ornament. The, uh, the uh, what is it called? The pattern design. That's what I right. grabbed that from. And you have a nice little uh, bit of little holes in here. We're gonna add some diffusion on here. So if you look Gosh. for the prop. Uh, uh, images of it there's like a little bit of diffusion in there so you can have uh, a little bit of uh, opaqueness so you don't see completely yeah, oh, what the circuitry so cool. is in there oh, i love the diffusion on that it looks so great it looks so good and the, it's so modular this is like the heart of this project i really do like this snap fit because what you get is you get neopixels on this side and neopixels on this side yeah. so that is awesome you get double-sided neopixels and what i really like about this project is circuit python has some really awesome group animations. So you can see here both sides are animating independently. So you can have two NeoPixel objects. This is a part of the Circuit Playground. This is an external NeoPixel. So you can have them animate different things using the LED animation library. So it's really, really cool. I could quickly show you uh, where, because I have never actually had to make a project where you have two independent NeoPixel objects. And we have some demo code that you can literally just copy and paste. It's ready to go. I was going to say, we're going to go ahead and, we're gonna and put that yeah, into yeah, yeah. The... I'll, I'll pull it up here on the learn guide. You got to wait because we're streaming to five different places. Uh, so maybe it'll load, maybe it won't. You're going to have to bear with this. But I'll, I'll tell you how to get to it. You can type an LED animation inside the learn guide uh, search, and then uh, circuit Python LED animations is the, is the guide. We are really bad with the internet right now. Like, I can't even load JPEGs. And you want to go to the animation group page on the sidebar there. Just click on animation group. Internet's not working, so I'm going to have to like figure out something. All the way down here, it says full example code. You can download the project bundle. It'll download all of the necessary libraries. Please do that because there are some dependencies for the Circuit Playground library. And um, if you don't do it, you're going to be manually hunting all the independent libraries for all the sensors and things. But hey, this is all ready to go for you. You can change up the number of pixels in your strip or your ring, and you can change up the board pin by just changing that right there. Brightness is all right there. It's in plain English, so you can just read it, and there you go. But it's very, very nicely documented. Shout out to um, to Katni Rambor for putting this together. You can see even some GIFs here 
um, showing the circuit playground yeah. with an external strip. So this is really, really awesome project. If you're doing anything for the holidays with a circuit playground, you attach an external strip, definitely check this guide out. And that is the LED animation library for Circuit Python. I think the only thing missing is maybe some sound effects. I don't know. Oh gosh. I'm sure there's it like a little It has a built-in speaker. It has a built-in accelerometer, temperature sensor, light sensor, I'm out of breath sensor. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the best thing. And, and uh, thousands of folks have the circuit playground. So definitely use it for something if you just have it laying around. Please, I beg you, <laughs> use it to make something awesome like this. Very, uh, very fun project. I, mom just come in here and she's like, that is so cool. Just looking at the lights glow and stuff you don't have to put any effort into into the parts really really cool there was a bunch of effort at one i know i know, I know. just look at the trash just, can <laughs> i know i'm just saying like if, if you don't have 3d printing skills you can still make something awesome with circuit python and the hardware uh, i can't remember what else i was gonna say but yeah i said I it all i think uh next week or two um can what? i just say that i brought down the christmas tree and put it all up even though it's not even Halloween yet, no, so we, we gotta can get, get the, the shots, shots for this. Ready. We gotta just, we gotta kind of. But you feel that we? I feel like we're behind. I think Disney started putting up all their Christmas stuff two weeks ago. I know it's not Halloween yet, but we've been in Halloween mode since September. Yeah, so. sure. Yeah, we've been celebrating <laughs> it every single day. It's time to I move love on. this one. I love that effect where right. it's, it's doing the um, the uh, the chase. The chase is one of my favorite animations, and you can customize and make the intervals. It's so fun to play around with the LED animation library. You can do cool. it all day. Very, very cool. So get right. your Circuit Playground. You might got one for free if you spent enough money with us. We used to give it out for free, but, uh, you know. We ran out. We ran out of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any comments? Drop them down. Any? No? Any left? suggestions on the filament to use? We're using the Translucent Red from Ulti Machine. Oh. And it looks very nice. Looks great. If yeah. using this. PLA, just regular PLA. Yep. Uh, if you're going to play with PETG, make sure you print it hotter. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. all I can say about that one. But we like to stick with PLA. The prop here is all PLA, too. There's no... Uh... The... Oh, yeah, you broke it. <laughs> what did I break? The uh, PET one. Yeah, I, <laughs> I literally had it in my hand. I was like, look how flexible it is. And I just snapped all the bits off. But uh, this is uh, this is nice and thick here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you get that nice rigidity with uh, PLA. But you got to print PETG at the right temperature in order for it to be right, cool. uh, annealed. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's Community Makes. All right, every Tuesday we find a fun, inspiring project to 3D print and do a time lapse of this week. Bit of a wearable. This is called the Skull Necklace by Dave Makes Stuff. So this is definitely, if you don't want to dress up but you still want to be themed for the holidays, this is a nice little jewelry accessory that you can print out and be nice and ghoulish for Halloween. This is a skull necklace. Oh, it's printed in, in place. Po yeah, it's all printed place. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. And <laughs> printed place, it has all these little um, joints that you can move the skulls around. And it's not just a necklace. The post actually has a bunch of different ones like bracelets and earrings and everything skull related at uh, jewelry um, you can find on that post. And this is, this is so crazy. Dude, it's so crazy. Too Rings, you got like all these different sizes. I love you got like skulls. these different um the like the it's stacked for skulls. like the earrings. This is freaking awesome. Such a good job wow. on getting all of the uh, joints to print without any supports and they're nice and uh not too loose, not too tight. Too the tolerances are sneaky. nice. A oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I would have to take the the little mm, jewelry thing okay. off. Well, that's cool. Uh, let me, let me... Oh, you have a hook. That's excellent. There yeah, so all that's printed in place. It's excellent. And so a bunch of little skulls that make up a nice little choker, I think, is what this one is for. But you can print a really big one to make a whole necklace, or like we were showing earlier, a ring or the earrings. Great choice. Uh, printing it in this shiny gray. Is that the, uh, yeah. the Rapunzel silver? This is Rapunzel silver from Filamentum, and you can Ooh. take a look at the detail oh, and you get focus some uh, focusing on there. Excellent job in terms of being able to get all the detail on there on a small oh, wow. print. Look this isn't that. like a nozzle thing. It's just point two. No, no, no. You can tell here with the overhang there, <laughs> the layer height. I think this is any uh, supports. Yeah, there were supports oh. on all of the backs here, but they come up pretty easy if you use the support settings that we like using. Wonderful. But there you go. Very awesome way to have a nice little ghoulish theme yeah. for your uh, Halloween. Yeah, you don't have to wear it. You can put it on a prop as well. Very, very cool. This is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Shout outs to uh, Dave Makes Stuff. Dave Makes Stuff. Excellent, excellent. 
Uh, just time for the holidays. Yeah, here's all the thing files. There's have a bunch them. of them. Yeah, have at them. <laughs> very, very cool. Eh, you know, print them in whatever color. Typical. All right, we have some other things here in the community makes. Some things were brought to us, so let me let me pull up some fun stuff here from this the community. Super cool. Yeah, this one's super cool. A couple years ago, we uh, we did a IoT um, smart planner, yes. and um, um, George Enrique Gombala Fuentes put together a, a nice uh, blog post of uh, of their build. So uh, very very cool to see other folks build it and, and have a whole build log of uh, how they put it together and their experiences with it. It, it works. It confirms that our models yeah, work. <laughs> it totally works. And I'm, I'm glad that everybody um, who built one uh, is, is, is just happy with it. And it's very modular, snap fit, yada, yada. Who cares? <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, thanks, oh, George, uh, for, for putting up a blog post. Not many folks put together a blog post um, of their builds and like make these phenomenal little gifts and stuff of the of them flowering and stop too much water oh that's especially for a succulent no no that's gonna <laughs> die i'm sorry george all right well that's one of them so shout out uh, to george for putting that together and sharing it with uh everybody here's another one what is this one i think that's the led hey, gas mask led gas mask this is really cool this was posted up by r drave z on thingiverse they got their build together of this 3D printed gas masks with NeoPixels, a laser pointer, I think EL wire as well, and a NeoPixel ring, and some conduits. You can make some cool gas mask light, light up stuff. So very, very cool. Okay, another one over here. This is the, uh, the iPhone case. Um, posted up by uh, Jay This is for the 12, Strink. though. So in the description, oh, okay. it, it says, says that it works for the 13. So the description, okay. Jay says, I printed this up for my iPhone 13 Max, taking a chance uh, that they were going to be the same dimensions. You can modify your description now that you know it works. I use Pet G because it's all I had. Uh, gonna this works with Pet G, so they got their, I don't know. I don't know how this works since uh, I was pretty sure that the volume and the um, the power button maybe they're and the switch maybe were trolling you. Were they, they moved around. Update their dimension. I don't know. I didn't get the max this year, so no. well, I'm, I yay! I'm glad it works. Maybe they're. <laughs> I don't know. It says Pro Max in Mini Flex case because it's Pro 12. Oh, but it works on the 13. See what I'm saying? Your older one from the 2020. No, you made a Pro Max. No, no, no. I know, I know. That's what I'm like. I, I was pretty sure that all the buttons moved around. At least they did for the uh, the non Max phones not. and the Mini, because I had up the uh, had update uh, the case for the Mini anyway, 13. Shout out to Jay Strink for putting this <laughs> up. I'm glad folks are getting uh, getting Ooh. their cases printed. It's a really cool use case of 3D printing. Alrighty, and then the last one we have here. This one. This is a laser cut window for the Pico MIDI Fighter project. I hey. did not know that you can do um, variable depth cuts with a laser cutter. It's oh, wow. news to me. They were able to figure out how, and they even posted some of their speed and power settings. Huh. So that is very useful. So if you are building the uh, the Pico MIDI Fighter and you're looking for how to, you can't mill this out. You can laser cut it too. You don't. Yeah, you can laser cut it or 3D print it. That's cool. So that's really cool. I haven't seen that before. <laughs> See you later, nice folks. Bye.